Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be doing how to get started in FPV in basically 2020. And I've been getting quite a lot of emails about what goggles should I purchase? What batteries should I get? And what transmitter should I use? So this is going to be a very detailed guide to tell you about transmitters and some issues you might run into also with goggles. So I've picked out the best of the best uh, of what I have tested. At least two products in here I haven't tested, but everybody else has been using them and they seem to be just fine, which is in the transmitter category. So everything is linked down below and also the timestamps are down below. So you can skip to whatever part of the video you'd like, but make sure you listen because there's a lot of important things I'm going to discuss here. So you don't accidentally purchase something wrong. So let's get started. Now, first of all, the goggles. Now, I will have links to Amazon, Get FPV, and also Banggood down below. Banggood's usually for Europe and US also. Uh, if you're in a hurry, you might want to purchase them with the expedited shipping option. Then you get it in three days. Uh, usually, some shippings take quite a bit, especially now with the whole uh, human malware issue currently that's going on. And you could purchase uh, from Banggood from different warehouses. And the links are all down below, by the way. You can check them out. So, EV800s. These are not the best goggles, but these are the best budget goggles. This is the best goggle you get for 54 bucks. This is the, the, the cheapest thing you should ever buy. Nothing below that. Uh, this, is, this doesn't even have diversity, but if you're on a budget, this is really good. And what's really nice about this, I actually have two of these. What's really nice about this is the faceplate can pop off and you could use it as a screen. So later on, if you like the hobby and you continue, you could just carry that screen and give it to somebody or debug really quickly with it. So it's a really nice option. This is if you're on a limited budget, this will get you going. Now, the next one over is the next budget goggle. This is, a, this is kind of the same goggle as the previous one, but you have two uh, receivers in there, so you get better reception here. I'd highly recommend you purchase some different antennas. Maybe I'll have some linked down below. Uh, this is the next step up. I mean, there's, I don't see, any, I haven't tested anything better than these two in the terms of budget category. So this is the next step up that I would recommend. And I think this one also has a DVR built in so you can actually record your flights, which could be very useful. Uh, this one, I don't think it has a DVR built in the really cheap one here, but this one has the SD card expansion. So you could press record and actually record everything. Now, next down the line are going to be the Sky Zones. Uh, these are the top tier goggles, and I am going in the order of lowest to highest tier. And uh, towards the last couple of them, they're basically identical. You could choose whatever one you can get for the best price or what could be shipped to you. Sky Zone O2X. These are really good goggles. I'd highly recommend. They have really good screens and their support is really great. They do have a uh, warranty and they also do have uh, a European service center. And they also, I think, have a US service center as well. So you don't have to ship these back to China, which is really great from Skies. And this is the, the European service station is very new, actually. Um, so next down the line is going to be a Sky Zone Sky O3 OLEDs. These are really, really great goggles. Uh, so these are 500 bucks right now. So these are also really, really great goggles. Uh, we also have the EV. 300 O's. These are basically the new Sky Zones, but they've been rebranded by Eashin for 450 bucks. These are really, really great goggles. And something to take uh, into consideration here with these goggles is that they have a module bay. Now, this module bay will allow you to replace it to any other module that comes out in the market. And theoretically, some give you better range and distance and penetration. Some give you worse. Uh, the one that's provided with this is really good, actually, really good. And I use it quite a lot. This is my main goggle, actually, right now, uh, which uh, I'd highly recommend, actually. These, the older Skyzone that we just looked at, have those built in, so you can't replace them, but they are also really, really great. I've tested them, and I can make sure, and I can stamp on that, that they're really good. Um, also, we have the Skyzone 4 x These have just been released. Nobody's used them just yet. But uh, we'll get we'll get to see them as time comes on. But theoretically, they should be actually really good since they're from Sky Zone. So Fat Sharks are, are the top tier of goggles in in the FPV market or in the FPV industry. However, the only problem with Fat Shark is is they don't come with a module, so you have to buy that separately. So when you purchase this, you're still not going to be able to fly with it until you purchase the module that's actually going to connect to it. Now there's quite a lot online. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Uh, but the overall best module you can purchase is this one, the Immersion RC Rapid Fire. That's the only thing I put on it, and it is quite expensive, 170 bucks just for this little piece that's going to go into your goggle. So that is something to take into consideration with a Fat Shark. And with the Sky Zone and the Eashines, they do provide that with you. And this is a, a module that's on par 
on par with this $170 one. This is by far one of the best ones. And that one is just as good, maybe plus minus 5%. So yeah, it's a, yeah, the market's changing quite uh, quickly. So now we're going to cover transmitters. However, with transmitters, you really have to pay attention here because if you buy a transmitter, there could be a possibility you won't be able to bind to your quadcopter, connect it to your quadcopter's receiver. And that's what we're going to cover today. So here we have the first one. This is the one that I use on a daily basis, actually. And I have all of the more expensive ones. And it's actually right next to me right here. This is the X9 Lite here. And when you purchase this, and you purchase a bind and fly quadcopter, you cannot expect it to bind immediately. And the reason for that is because FR Sky released a new update that doesn't connect to older receivers, which could be a bit of a problem at times. Uh, so it's a hit and miss, especially with those little micros here. So if you are purchasing an FR Sky Tyrannus X9 Lite, then, this is very important, then you have to purchase this module for it. Now, the benefits also of this module, and again, this will only work on the X9 Lite and the X Lite. So keep that in mind. But I highly recommend you just get the X9 Lite. So this one is the smaller modules. This one gives you a lot of benefits. It'll allow you to connect to the older FR Sky uh, versions of the receivers and allow you to connect to Fly Sky and the Chinese toys. So you could do quite a lot with it. So it's really good to keep at hand. And I actually have mine, actually, is it plugged in the back? No, I have an R9 plugged in the back, but it's very useful. So if you are purchasing this, I highly recommend you pick one of these up. Very important you do that or else you won't be able to buy and then you're gonna have to go pick it up and wait. So yeah, keep that in mind. And what's really nice also with the FR Sky controllers is they can plug right into the PC and you can start playing your simulators almost immediately without the need to do anything, which again is really great. Now we move up the ladder. We're looking, we're still looking at FR Sky. This is the QX7. This is 110 bucks. You can get them a bit more expensive with some other options, but I prefer the cheapest variants of both of these because I've used the, the, the cheaper ones and also the more expensive ones. There isn't really that much of a difference except in the gimbals and the gimbals have lasted me more than a year now on the cheaper ones. So it's up to you at the end of the day, really. Um, but it's not going to make a big difference for you. So this is 110 bucks. And again, it's the same issue with the X9 Lite. You might be able to bind and you might not be able to bind to specific quadcopters receivers, even though if the receiver is an FR Sky. So what you would have to do is you would have to purchase a multi-protocol module, just like this one. Now, this one is different than the other one because this is the bigger version because the, the X9 Lite has a bigger, bigger module bay. So you will need this one right here. And again, this will allow you to connect to FlySky, the older FR Skies, Spectrum, the Chinese toys. Uh, you just have to keep playing around with the uh, protocols until you get it to connect to your Chinese toys and you're good to go. So, yeah, you will have to purchase this, or I highly recommend you purchase this, especially if you're buying small micros, you won't be able to bind with the latest FR Sky products. Now, we move down the line to Jumper. I personally have not used it, but most of the other YouTubers have been using it, and it seems to be working just fine. Now, I don't know how reliable they are. I don't know if they have a warranty service and, and where are their service stations. Now, I know, for example, FR Sky has in Europe, has in the US, and has some other places as well. So if you ever have any issues, you just email them with the invoice, and then they'll just uh, fix you right up on that. Um, but with Jumper, I have no idea. So that's uh, it's up to you. But this is a really good price because what's different with this Jumper protocol, this Jumper radio, is they have those multi-protocol modules that we saw, but built in. So immediately when you purchase this, you can bind to FlySky, FR Sky, uh, just about everything except the newer FR Sky uh, receivers. So it is getting a bit complicated here. I, I, so you just got to be very careful. You're better off with this technically or with an FR Sky with a multi-protocol module that'll cover just about everything. But at the end of the day, it's up to you how you want to use these. Um, so this is a really decent one as far as I know. And here's another step up. All of these are again linked down below with GetFPV, Amazon, wherever I found them, I linked them all down below for you guys. Uh, this one is just a step up. It has uh, the 900 megahertz system built into it. Um, so you could get kind of long range, but depends on your receiver. But if you're a beginner, don't really care about this too much just yet. You're, you're really not going to be doing long range. Uh, so, but also this has the long range stuff and the short range stuff or the 2.4 gigahertz stuff, uh, just like the multi-protocol modules that we just saw earlier. So it's just a small step up here 
but it's nice to have it if you have the cash get this one you get a bit more uh frequencies to broadcast here now we're going to move to bind on flies just a couple quick ones that i recommend that are really cheap and they're already pre-built so you could just start flying immediately so for example here we have the iflight nazgo 5 4s so this is very important when you come to purchase your batteries you're going to want to get a 4s 1500 milliamp battery and we're going to cover batteries in a bit here so this is a really nice one this is an insane price actually i've used it quite a lot of people actually use these and they are really good so you can buy them with the fr sky xm plus radio you should be able to connect to just about everything the rxsr don't know how new these receivers are that are coming with these so you might only be able to connect with an fr sky with a multi-protocol module or you might be able to connect with the jumper i don't know so uh but you're better off theoretically with the fr sky and a multi-protocol module that's just uh, how i go actually with everything uh, so this is a really good one also we have their nazgul v2s i haven't tested these but obviously the, the issue they should perform pretty decently or pre pretty well actually for for the price which is insane 200 bucks for a really proper quadcopter is and say now especially nowadays back then well you couldn't get anything close to this you, you barely even if you built one here we have another one so we have two variants here we have a 4s and a 6s uh this is the 4s here so you'd get it a 4s battery and this is a 6s so you get it a 6s battery 6s you get theoretically more flight time you actually do get quite a bit more flight time and usually you can feel a bit more power as well but also your quadcopter is slightly more heavier but if you're a beginner you won't even feel any of that and you won't even notice any of that now batteries here so two brand I've, I've tested a lot of batteries i've purchased wrong batteries uh the two brands that i usually stick to because the batteries you have no idea how important a battery is if you buy really cheap ones you can't get the full power and you will have issues such as blackout like your video transmitter just turns off when you do a full throttle and then you break your whole quadcopter so there are two battery brands that i recommend there's some other good ones also but these are the ones from my experience the china hobby lines so we have these orange ones here from china hobby line again everything's linked down below these orange ones here have they're like their mid-range uh, lipos but they're really really good now you need to take something into consideration any usually any lipo battery that outputs a lot of power tends to die quicker then batteries are in the mid-range uh, it's just the type of lithium i guess that's what i've noticed on most of my setups so so the black ones here i think they're top of the line possibly i'm not sure i haven't tested the black ones all i could speak about are the orange ones i use and the white ones the white ones don't give out as much power as the orange ones but the white ones last quite a while also also do, do the orange ones as well so those two i'd recommend the black ones people are speaking great of but i haven't seen i haven't personally tested any of them just yet now, just a, a quick reminder, if you're buying a 4S 5-inch quadcopter, so you're going to need a 4S 1500 milliamp battery. You could go bigger if you want, but that is the, the, the best optimal size right here. So this is for a 4S. Same thing with 6S. It's 6S 1500 milliamp, or you can even go with a 6S 1300, go a little bit smaller. It'll equate to around a 4S 1500 milliamp in terms of watts. Now, the next battery that is really great are the Tattoo R lines. I haven't tested these fun flies. Some people say they're good. Don't know. Uh, but these are the ones that I use currently, which are the Tattoo R lines. Um, they're just really good. They last a while. But I noticed something about these is usually in crashes, uh, they tend to die or something gets disconnected on the inside. I have a quite, quite a bit of these batteries that I need to look into. Uh, just one of the cells just disappears. So that's also just something to take note of here. Uh, usually people get whatever they could find in an area because right now it's getting much more difficult to ship lipos. So whatever you find in your area, I think you should just go on them. You can't go wrong with any of these two brands. And there's also another brand, but I haven't found it again recently. It's called like Asichi or something. Um, they're okay. I, I wouldn't put them on the same level as these in terms of longevity use. They do, But they do last a while, but you, the... The current, the power output of them drops significantly. Uh, so I'd stick to China Hobby Line or CNHL or the tattoos here. And uh, you'll be flying like any other pro pilot or uh, a veteran flyer, basically. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Everything is linked down below. Uh, come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways there. And check the links down below. There's a lot of awesome things you could benefit from, such as my 
ask FPV application. If you have any questions about FPV related, you go there, the whole community will help you out in a matter of seconds. And I also do have a social media platform for FPV pilots dedicated for FPV pilots, which is fpvlink.com. Uh, there is an Android and iOS application as well. And well, that's it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.